Hello, what is up guys? Eman from Peso Smart Page here. Welcome sa pinabagong episode. Shout out to all the podcast listeners as well. I appreciate you all. Today, we're going to talk about Henebra San Miguel Incorporated or yung stock code niya which is GSMI. But before that, check muna natin yung nangyari sa PSE and PSEI yesterday. So up siya ng around 81.65 points. 1.22% yung change niyan. Then nasa 6.8k na ulit yung PSEI. Then all shares naman nasa 3.6k na close. 18.16 points yung change. Nasa 0.5% yan. Then itong iba, financials, industrial holding firms, services, mining, and oil property. So on down lang is yung mga holding firms and mining and oil. Yung total volume is around 631.9 million. Total trades around 78.3 thousand. Total value is around 6.9, ano ba to? Uh, 6.9 billion pesos. <laughs> Alright. Then advances 664. Then yung declines, ibig sabihin yung mga bumaba na stock prices, 124. Then unchanged is 54. Then here we can see yung mga top gainers. Number one dyan is yung Rocks or Rojas Holdings Incorporated. Up ng 14.81%. That's crazy. Then yung Phil Web Corporation, 12.55%. Yung Petron, up ng 8.98%. Yung Araneta Properties, 8.26%. And then yung Makai or Maki Holdings is up ng 8.11%. Then yung Sun Life got hammered yesterday. Nabasa ko ng article na parang may unsolicited parang tender offer daw or buyer nung stock ng Sun, Sun Life Financial na it's way below the current market price. But yeah, I think na-fulfill yung mga orders in. I'm not sure why. So down siya ng 28.56%. <laughs> and they're saying that crypto is too volatile. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so sobrang laki niya, no? 28.56%. Wow. Then yung Alson's Consolidated Resources Incorporated, down ng 9.09%. So ganyan lang yung mga parang normal no, sa stock market. Siguro mga below 10%. But 28% down? Grabe yan. Holsem, down din ng 7.27%. Yung Surpass Incorporated, down ng 6.15%. And lastly, yung Benguet Corporation B, down ng 5.75%. And now, here we are sa weekly chart ng Henebra San Miguel. Again, yung stock code is GSMI. So, going back nung 2019, nagtatala siya ng all-time high. And kita natin, all-time high din yung kanyang um, RSI. Weekly RSI ito. Ah. So, medyo mataas yan. So, yung pinakamataas at that time was around 69.8. And eventually, bumagsak na siya until nag-crash siya. Kasama siya sa nag-crash nung nag-start yung pandemic. And doon nag-low yung kanyang RSI at around 27.7. Again, weekly to ah. So, yung lowest niya at that time was around 25 pesos per share. And I was buying at this current level. Mga 33 ako yung average price ko when I bought this stock. And then eventually, syempre... Nagkaroon ng recovery And then on 2021 Yun yung magandang year Para dito sa GSMI So if we take a look At the uh, price range Sabihin natin mga 30 no? 30 And then sabihin natin 1 year March So andito tayo So up ka ng 63.21% If you bought this stock Plus nagbibig pa sila ng dividends Every single quarter so, sa current price niya ngayon, 105, nasa 5% pa din, no? Annually, yung makukuha yung dividend yield dito sa stock na to. Sa binibigay na ng dividends, kumpara sa current market price. So, that's really good. And imagine, no? Dati naman mas maliit yung binibigay na ng dividends. But still, it's still good. Dividends, additional yun sa capital nyo. And you're gaining, you know, paper gains. So, di ba? Kita nyo naman, 63.21% if nagbenta kayo at around 51 pesos nung 2021. But it, if you just held on, and nakita natin yung parabolic rally dito. From 51, sabihin natin, June 21. Yan, umabot siya ng around 100 pesos per share. Pagka nagbenta ka dyan, up ka ng 217.6%. And you're, you're selling at like the, the strength of the stock. Yes, tumaas pa siya ng konti. Kasi diba nasa 105 na nga tayo. And umabot pa tayo dito around 126 yung all-time high. But dyan natin nakikita na maganda magbenta kasi. Yung indicator, kita natin na over super overbought yung stock. 
kasi yung level ng kanyang RSI is as it, at its highest nasa 86.74 at this time so it wouldn't really be wrong di ba? to sell dito sa level na to yes you could have gained more dito but kita nyo di ba bumababa na yung RSI sa ngayon so from here bumababa na siya medyo may hirapan na ulit tong makuha no? kasi who's buying this stock at this price level I personally won't buy this stock at 105 pesos per share <laughs> I think that's a bit overvalued. That's why maganda rin, you know, magbenta from time to time and like swing trade. Kapag ka nakita nyo na, you know, ah, sobrang greedy na nung market, I think I'm gonna offload some. Kasi katulad nito, di ba? Kung naka maganda yung entry price mo sa GSMI, it's okay to like hold some. Sabi natin kasi, di ba, 200% na. So, X3 na yan, times 3 na yung, what you call this? Yung investment mo. Kung nakapagbenta, Hindi, more than... Oh, hindi, tama, tama, tama ba? Oh, kasi nasa, 20, nasa 30 pesos per share ka. So, around 3x, more than 3x yung investment mo, yung capital mo. So, you can sell, sabi natin, half. Or like, try to recover your capital. ba Parang magandang rule of thumb yun eh. Pagka na-double mo yung, yung investment mo, try to recover yung iyong capital. I mean, I'm not saying na that's what I'm doing exclusively kasi I still hold stocks and I still hold and have some conviction sa mga cryptocurrencies na hinawakan ko. But it's also smart to take profits from time to time. Especially kapag, ka, for example, growth stock yung hinawakan mo, di ba? Does it make sense to like hold, hodl lang na hodl and not take profits? Kasi it's not giving you any additional capital. Puro paper gains yung nakuha mo. Diba? Like for example, it makes sense to just hold GMA7 and not take profits. Why? Kasi nabibigay sila na consistent na dividends since 2008. They have never missed dividend payments since 2008 nung na-list sila dito sa PSE. But if you're we're talking about sabi natin JFC na yes, they're giving out dividends but it's trash. Diba? Yung dividend yield is like 1%, 2%, even like less than 1% sometimes. Same thing with SM, di ba? Mga growth stocks yun. And it wouldn't make sense to just huddle it out until, you know, until until you die. <laughs> Wag naman, di ba? But, but yeah, for, for a very long time. I'm not saying that it's not good to hold it long term, but you still have to take profits. You have to secure your capital. You said that will give you more opportunity in the future. I'm not saying to day trade, <laughs> but you have to be smart with your strategy. Kasi katulad nga nito, diba? Nagkaroon ng parabolic run. Paano kung bumagsak siya ulit at, at, the, at the levels nung pandemic, diba? Sabihin natin, nandito tayo sa 105. Bumagsak siya at around 40, sabihin natin 45 na lang, no? You're down 56%. Diba? Eh, you could have like sold at 100 and you're up to 100 plus percent. And mahirap i-recover to, no? Yung 56% drop na to. You have to double your 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 investment ulit para ma-recover to. So, di ba, kita nyo yung parang nuances ng, ng trading, ng investing, <laughs> and like huddling. So, it, yung mga strategies na to, it has its own upsides and it has its own downsides so it's really up to you kung ano yung ina-apply mo na strategy and kung meron ka ba talaga conviction and if you really trust the asset that it will just go up but of course lahat nung tumataas magkakaroon ng correction yan di ba laging magkakaroon ng correction kasi hindi hindi palaging pataas lang that's impossible <laughs> you know Pagka iniisip mo na, ah, hindi, tataas lang ng tataas yung valuation ng asset to. Yes, that is true for, in general, sa mga markets. Sa stock market, in general, tumataas lang talaga siya. Bitcoin, in general, with time, it just goes up. But, yung mga short-term movements, yung mga dips, hindi natin may iwasan yan, yung mga corrections. Kasi kailangan, you know, parang, kailangan magkapitulate ng market. Kailangan magkaroon ng correction. Kailangan magkaroon ng accumulation phase. Para maka-entry ulit yung, for example, yung mga bulls, di ba? Yung mga naniniwala dun sa asset class. They have to re-enter the market para mag-ignite ulit yung move upwards. Kasi hindi pwedeng pataasan talaga ng pataas. Yes, there are phases like that. 
there are faces like that. Like, katulad nito, di ba? Ever since um, March of 2020, pataas lang yung GSMI until this point. Until nakuha yung kanyang all-time high na 126. But right now, it's it's going down. Di ba? From 126, susubihin natin, 126. We're down around 16%. Di ba? And yes, sobrang hirap itime ng market. <laughs> I mean, only a few people was able to sell at 126. And kita naman, week lang yun. So, as of on this trading week, most of the people just sold at around 117 level. 118, 115, 116. Diba? So, you have to follow your strategy. And of course, yung GSMI nga is nagbibigay din ng dividend. So, it's okay to just hold it. But, If, for example, yung capital mo is like 100k, then di ba nga nag, ano na siya, naging, uh, sabihin natin 25, sige, sabihin natin, so, gawin natin sim- simple lang, no? parang hindi na ako mahirapan sa math. 25k yung iyong investment dito, and then 25 pesos ka din nakabili. Sabihin natin, sobrang galing mo tumayong ng market, no? nakabili ka ng 25 ng no? all-time low. Hindi na kapag, nasa 100 level na tayo ngayon, sabihin natin, di ba, 105, current market price. And then, inisip mo na hindi, tataas pa. Just secure your 25k, right? Kasi you can deploy that capital to another stock. ba? Diba? Kasi pwede natin sabihin, hindi, hindi, sige, ride ko lang itong GME, eh, itong GSMI. <laughs> diba? But, what if it goes down again? ba? Diba? Sayang yung opportunity to like take profits. And again, that opens up new doors or new opportunities for you to invest. Sabi natin, oy, may may isang undervalued na asset ngayon. Sabi natin, Jamie 7, 'di ba? Like look at the weekly RSI. It's a 37. Pag tinitingnan natin yung daily RSI, it's it's in <laughs> it's garbage. Yung RSI is garbage. <laughs> it's a 21 and almost two weeks nang ganito yung nangyayari, 'di ba? Yes, pwede pa rin tong bumaba. It could just go down again to like below 10 pesos. That is a possibility, but it could also bounce back. Diba? And yung 25k na yun, pwede mong i-deploy ito sa stock na to. Or like any other stock, pwede kang, you know, sabi natin, oh, sige, gusto kong bumili ng Bitcoin. What's happening now? It's, it's just trading sideways, and your RSI kita nyo dito. Diba? Wala masyadong strength. In comparison dito, and in comparison dito. Diba? So, yun. Parang nagkakaroon ka lang ng different options if you take profit. And again, as I've said before, ang ganda ng mga opportunity with like stable coins kasi ang taas ng kanilang mga APY, APRs. So you're earning interest just by holding yung mga stable coins na yun. And that will give you around 10% even sometimes in USD I think that's 20 plus percent or more depends kung ano yung platform na ginagamit nyo and that is technically free money that you can invest kapag nakuha mo na yung mga yield na yun that's why again I'm a big fan of dividend investing kasi I'm earning yield on an investment that I just hold yes it's it's still volatile in comparison sa stable coin na you know kaya nga siya stable coin kasi just holding you know, cash. Parang cash lang din siya, but it's not really fiat cash. It's a cryptocurrency. So you're earning yield from that asset and you can buy other assets na, yes, meron siyang risk. Mas mataas yung risk niya, but the upside is also greater in comparison dun sa mga stable coins na yun. Or instead of like holding fiat cash, di ba? So, same thing here. You can, you can apply the same principle. And I hope I'm making sense, okay? <laughs> Kasi, what I'm saying, everything everything that I'm saying, it makes sense in my head. But sometimes, for other people, it doesn't make sense. But yeah, just let me know in the comment section if you have any questions. And uh, let's move on now sa financials itong GSMI. So, yun. Ito ay for 2021 na. Yung kanilang assets nag-increase from 10 billion. Tama ba? Yeah, currency in thousand. So, add lang ng three zeros or multiply to 1,000. Yeah, from 10.8 billion naging 13.2 billion. Total assets nag-increase then from 16 to 18.3 billion. 
Liability sa dagdaga ng around 200 million. Tama ba? Yes, 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 yes. And then, retained earnings sila from 9.5 billion naging 12.6 billion. Stockholders equity, since tumaas yung kanilang stock prices, naging, naging 11.5 billion from 9.4 billion. Book value per share from 29.62 to 40.23. Gross revenue nila is tumaas from 36.2 billion to 42.5 billion. Kasi, di ba, 2020 kasi itong figures na to. So, maganda yung recovery nila na 2021. Then, gross expense tumaas din ng around 5 billion. Income before taxes, 4 billion naging 5.5 billion pesos. And yung kanilang net M income after taxes, 2.7 billion nung 2020, naging 4.1 billion netong 2021. So, earnings per share from 9.46 naging 14.59. That, that is a big jump. That's why nire-reflect din neto yung yung performance ng company sa stock prices. And sabi ko nga sa inyo, yung stock prices nila is comparable na or ka-level na ng SMC. <laughs> Which is at this level na rin or even siguro mas mataas na yung GSMI. Tingnan natin yung close. Yeah. Halos same na sila. 106 yung SMC. So ba Solid. And again, yung GSMI, maganda yung binibigay nilang dividends currently. Kasi may mga ganitong special na Yung, I think, alin ba yung, yung normal, I think, is yung piso. Then, special yung 0.375. And this will yield you around 5.2, 5.1% on a yearly basis. So, ba Pretty solid. Even though yung risk nga is a bit high right now. Since, kakapunta lang sa all-time high. But we've already established support around 100 to 105 pesos na level. But yeah, uh, it could still go down. And syempre, depende yan sa mga macroeconomic factors, political factors, and syempre yung performance ng company, and syempre sentiment ng uh, mga investors. So, yun lang naman. I believe we covered everything. So, yun guys. We are gonna end the episode here. Sana may natutunan kayo. And if you kayo at the end of this video, thank you very much. I really appreciate you. Smash na rin yung like button kasi super nakaka-help yun sa ating YouTube channel. And subscribe ka na rin if you want more videos like this in the future. Then you can also follow me sa mga socials ko at MNPSPH if you want to connect with me there. And again, thanks everyone for watching and listening. Stay safe out there. And always remember, be peso smart.